this is a gross motor room so the kids get to move their bodies. So whether it's with using the big wooden blocks or else uh, rocking on the boat or climbing up on the mountain. So this, no this room gets noisy as you can hear but this is where they come to be loud and to move their bodies. And if kids are finding it overstimulating, then they can move to a different room. Uh, so there's block building, that's, an, that's one piece of it. That's one piece of it. So they're learning a lot of math concepts, numbers, 2D shapes, 3D shapes, balance. And they get to be creative because they get to build structures with it. And we also have a music area, so the kids that are very interested in the kids that are interested in making music they can perform in here as well so the mountain room with the, with the feature of the mountain is really an important part of risk taking because today kids are bubble wrapped a lot and we don't want them to get hurt and so this is a chance for the kids to get up there and take some chances and and for the staff because at first we were a bit nervous we let them only go so high and now we let them go to the top and if they want to jump we let them go for it. This is the butterfly room and in the butterfly room there's various activities that are set up for the kids but they also choose their own. So what you're looking at right now behind me are a bunch of boys and girls that decided they wanted to work with plasticine today. So most of them, there's a few of them that are working on castles, um, more of a 3D shape and then some that are working on 2D flat shapes. They're becoming artists. They're all artists in this room and they're actively busy so you notice that they talk with each other, um, they're, sometimes they're involved in just what they're doing and they're engaged solely on their activity, but it's all good and it's, it's whatever they choose to do. At some of the tables we're learning fine motor, at some of the tables we're learning patterns with beading, um, at this table we're learning structure building, castles, this table we're learning to also build structures. We're learning friendships, sharing. The, probably the biggest challenge we had was trying to share our level of uh, trust in what we were doing with our parents and getting them to buy in. Uh, parents had, a lot of parents looked at this through their own lens of their past experiences. And so it was something different, you know, and parents don't want us to experiment on their children. And, and I, we fully understand that. We, I just laid it on the line and said, we really need you to trust us. And I think that, to me, that actual conversation that I had with a group of parents said, just saying, you know, really just give us your trust. Like, if, if you believe in us, we're not going to do wrong by your children. And I think for some of the parents, that was sort of the pivoting point for them. They um, just said, okay. It's amazing how some of them couldn't even write when they came in, and now they're writing sentences and stories. It's, it's really phenomenal to see. For me, a lot of the change has been just the help I used to be a teacher with 25 kids on my own and now there's one in, like 10 kids versus one teacher so that helps a lot. You don't have the behavioral issues that you normally have um, when there's not much space and lots of children. I love team teaching. I was really hesitant at first to do it but now that we've figured out our roles and how it all fits together I feel like my workload is dramatically decreased in a certain way, but I also love meeting with everybody else and bouncing back ideas, because that's how you learn is a, is a team approach. We work with the same kids, the aides aren't designated to a specific student, so when you walk in the room you don't know who the aides are working with, which is nice, that, so then there aren't any preconceived notions about the children and their capabilities. And uh, I just feel like we learn from each other. There's no expert in the room. Well, I get to teach what I'm interested in, so it's really a strength-based approach. I also have co-workers, so it's five more sets of eyes to be able to add to content area, um, to watch for kids that might have special challenges. I, don't, I feel like we're catching things before kids slip through the cracks. Um, and also I watch my co-workers and their approach with kids, so I'm learning a lot from them. So I feel like the professional development happens on site and the growth is exponential. It's amazing. Well, I think I went to university at a great time where they're trying to change it from uh, teacher perspectives to start entering play base and how, and just the research was showing it was better for the kids. So I entered at a really great time into my career because that was the model Tim wanted to enter into. So. It was an easy transition for me. 
Oh, there's so many benefits with team teaching approach. The one that first comes to mind is if there's students with special needs, um, those that have learning disabilities, behavioral concerns, they come into the classroom, it's the first time you're meeting them. And with the team, you pick up very, very quickly who is in your classroom and who requires the services that they need. So, I mean, this was the first year that we've had nine identified in our PUF. And it's never been like that before. So I think um, the validation and knowing that there are students that need some extra supports um, puts things in place faster. You get the team together and you're brainstorming, okay, what are we going to do for this child? Um, and how can we better serve them? And I think that's a real positive in the team approach. Uh, and I just think the kids get the best of both worlds. They yeah. get my strings, they get Caroline strings, you get Leanne strings, and um, you know, if something doesn't go well, I have three other people to sit down and say, how can we make this better? What did work well for us, and what can we do better next time? And I think, and then you just get to plan together, and then you start bouncing ideas back and forth, and things go from down here to up here just because you have three heads in one game. We hear that businesses are looking for different types of thinkers, out-of-box thinkers, risk-takers, and you're not going to get that in a traditional closed classroom um, in the same way that you do with an environment like this where they feel free, feet on the floor, with still rules. There's rules that they have to follow and you tell them in a positive way and they, they uh, will rethink what their choices are. You are going to get think, uh, thinkers, critical thinkers, uh, that are going, going to go out there in the world and they're going to make a difference and they're going to be leaders in, in the world. We see children that are, are emotionally quiet, withdrawn, they started the year off and through the course of the year you can see their confidence coming out. My first word of advice would be go slow to go fast, right? So take your time. This, even though this is our first year in the project, it really started the inception. The idea took place about three years ago where we had to introduce play-based learning. Then we decided, can we do some examples of team teaching between the two teachers? And then that just expanded into, let's knock the walls down and let's go. But I would absolutely believe that anybody can make something like this accomplished and fit their needs of their community. So Some schools may say, oh my goodness, all this equipment, how do we ever afford that? But for ourselves, we found two extra students covered the initial costs of our, our um, equipment purchases. It, it wasn't a question of using the excuse, well, we can't because of financial reasons. Oh, we can't because I'm afraid of um, what the parent community is going to say. Their greatest fear was 65 kids running around. Uh, we've invited them to come in at all times of the day to first-hand experience what's going on. Uh, so that fear itself has gone away. They've understood that, no, it's not chaos. It's, it's actually very structured. And their kids are learning. Uh, we've had parents come back to us and say, I can't believe my child's reading already and it's only January and they're in kindergarten. And to me, that's some of the most positive feedback that we can have. Uh, we're all about literacy, right? And, but that literacy only comes because the program is set up to develop the kids' social skills. And they can't learn unless they have the social skills, which just reflects on the fact that our kids are gaining social skills to learn. Uh, and we really impressed upon our parents that it becomes it becomes an academic program based on the level of social skills that are grown in the classroom. So they really had to wrap their heads around that first because the preconceived notion is, oh, we have to sit down, we have to do paperwork. And one of the comments from our parents was, my child never brings paperwork home. Well, yeah, of course not, but they can read and they can write. Because right? they're doing that in class on, and they're so highly engaged. And the feedback again is just, their kids are telling them they love coming to school. And I think that's probably one of your greatest moments for us. So.